Praise the Lord. God bless you. It's Thursday night. Yes, Thursday night. Bible study night. Come on in. Join me as we go into the word of God. As we study that word so that we can hide it within our hearts. So that we don't sin against him, our great father. And so that when life trials and tribulations come our way, we have a firm foundation to stand upon. Because we have hid the word within our hearts. So come on in. I am Apostle Dr. Dawn Nicole Manning. Pastor of Love of Jesus Deliverance Evangelistic Center Community Church. Located in Newark, New Jersey. And I just want you to know that I get excited when I have the opportunity to teach the Word of God. So why don't you go ahead and press the like button, press the share button, to get some more people into the room so that they can have an experience of what it truly means to study the Word of God. And I'm going to get started in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you and give you honor and glory for all that you have done. Thank you for bringing down, us down through the course of this day. We thank you, O oh God, because the enemy tried to bamboozle us and get us all frazzled. But we thank you for greater are you that's in us than he that is in the world. So we just thank you that you got us here in this space and in this time so that we can study your word. Now, Father, I pray that you would just bind up all distraction. Lord, that you would open up the understanding of those who have an ear to hear. O oh God, downpour upon your people, oh God, so that this word will edify, uplift, and restore. Father, I thank you, give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Cohen. God bless you, Evangelist Home, Elder McCombs. God bless you. God bless you, Elder Sykes. God bless you, Amanda Broughton Patterson. God bless you. Welcome, welcome in the name of the Father, Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost. I am going to talk about the topic of defeating pessimism. Pessimism. What is that word? Pessimism. What does that word mean? Well, let's go ahead and look according to the dictionary as to what it means. From the Oxford Dictionary, pessimism is a tendency to see the worst aspect of things or believe that the worst will happen. It is a lack of hope or confidence in the future. I'll read it again. It's a tendency to see the worst aspect of things or believe that the worst will happen. It is a lack of hope or confidence in the future. It's negative thinking. Negative thinking. You know what? In the world that we live in with all the things that are going on, you're hearing about wars, you hear about disease, you hear about uh, losing loved ones and uh, these shootings and you know, um, criminal activity, all of these horrific things that are happening in the world. And it causes for you sometimes to become pessimistic. You kind of, it, some people get into a frame of mind to say, well, you know what, what, what's the point in looking for a brighter tomorrow or a better tomorrow? And so before you know it, you're in a pessimistic attitude. You just don't feel like there's hope. I keep trying. Some people feel like they keep trying to keep, you know, uh, um, uh, putting great effort towards reaching their goals. But it seems like door after door after door after door just keeps shutting. Just keeps shutting. So what happens? They say, you know what? Forget it. No hope. No hope in the future. Because I, got, I got hit so many times in, in, in the past. What point is it to even have hope to look towards the future? This is all the characteristics of being pessimistic. And it happens because of the world that we live in. And that's why it's so important that we understand who we are, who we, who we put our hope and our trust into, which is Jesus Christ, so that we don't fall prey to being a pessimistic person. Go with me to the scripture. I hope you have your pen, your paper, your notebook. Make sure, of course, you have your word. You need your word. Make sure you have your word so that we can study on tonight. And I'm not going to be before you long, but I'm going to give you something that's going to help you. And I want you to always remember to go back and study the scriptures for yourself so that the Lord can give you a personal divine revelation to meet you where you need to be met. Go with me to 1 Kings 19. 1 Kings 19. Then I'm going to skip to uh, 10. 
19, 4, excuse me, 1 Kings 19, 4, and then I'm going to skip to 10. And Elijah prayed that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life for I am no better than my father's. So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I am left alone and they seek to take my life. First Kings 19, four and I skip to 10. Elijah was going through. They were coming up against him. They were coming, they, 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 the false prophets, uh, were coming up with Jezebel and her spirit. They was cu coming up against him. All the other prophets that were trying to do what God called them to do, they were killed, being killed off. And Elijah was standing alone. He was by himself. I, you know what? I know it's a story, but in reality, when you have a support system and your support system, you see it kill being killed off. Some of us had mothers and fathers, grandmothers. Some of us had cousins, brothers and sisters. And you, you thought they were going to be around, but for whatever reason, they're no longer there. Your support system. That's enough to make you become very pessimistic. Because you become prone to depending on those individuals to help you as you move forward. So now they're all gone. So imagine Elijah, all of his prophetic friends are now deceased. They're gone. They've been killed off. And he's standing alone trying to fight this battle, trying to do what God is calling him to do. He got to the point where he just said, oh, my goodness, Lord, take my life. Just say this too much. Have you ever gotten to that point? And you say, Lord, take my life. This, ooh, I, don't, I don't think I could be here. Because you feel like there's no hope for tomorrow. You feel like everything that you may have worked hard at or the relationships that you created, they no, they no longer exist. So you feel like you're alone. You're by yourself. This can cause for you to become pessimistic. All of those things that Elijah was fighting for and praying for and all of those things that he was working towards, trying, you know, making the people turn their, their face to God, giving God the reverence that he deserves. And all of what was being done was the very opposites. The altars were being torn down that were, were there, that were built to honor God. The prophets killed with sword. He said, I'm left alone. And that now they want to take my life. What, what do I have to lean on? We know that sometimes we want to give up. We know this. And anybody who said it, they don't. They, oh, every day I just wake up and I'm just fine. This that another. No. Sometimes you feel like giving up. You feel like giving up when, it's, when, when your pocket is low. Mm -hmm. When them dollar bills are not showing up and, you know, you're, you see that you got bills and you can't pay your bills. Sometimes it will make you say, oh, man. What am I going to do? And sometimes you feel like giving up. So sometimes you're in um, a relationship and you think that it's not going to work out. You look at the person, be like, ooh, they so mean. I don't know why I got connected with this person. Oh, why did I marry that person? Yes, it happens. It happens. It happens. You feel like giving up. But we have to understand that when we live this life, we have to make sure that our hope and our trust is in God. We know the story of Elijah, how he came out. He came out, he defeated Jezebel and all those false prophets. He got the victory. He had that moment, but he held on. And see, that's what's going to help us to hold on. When we have a greater understanding that God is greater than our circumstances and that God will see us through. He's there to help us. He's there to, to give us what we need, that hope. Because it's the hope that keeps us holding on. We hope that things get better. We hope that things are going to change. We put our hope and our trust in him because we know that he is, the great I am, is the change agent. He's the one that has the power to do just that. So, where there's hope, there's life. Where there's hope, you have a desire to live. And because you have that hope, you have an understanding that you can carry on. 
Proverbs 13, 12. Proverbs 13, 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. How do we get over pessimism? You have to set up tangible goals. You reachable goals. You have to do something that gives you, you a, 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 a euphoric feeling because you've accomplished it. Say for instance, some people create these big challenges that, oh, I got to lose 50 pounds. And they set themselves up for failure because you're looking at the 50 and you say, I'm trying to get to that 50. And before you know it, you're putting chips in your mouth, cakes, cookies, or whatever this and the other. And just instead of saying, I'm going to lose one pound. I'm going to lose one pound. One pound. Say in two weeks. That's all I'm going to work on in one or two weeks. You just work on that because that's an attainable goal. Right? You're working on that within two weeks because you your mind is set that that's reachable. I can do that. Your mind is set. And so now, two weeks pass by, you exercise now. You did what you're supposed to do because you're not going to lose weight. Keep stuff in your face. Right? So you did what you're supposed to do. Walked around the block. Five times, did some stretches, had your, you know, your nice salad with maybe a little bit of tuna fish. You had your, you know, vegetables and you ate what you're supposed to do, your right portion. Two weeks done passed by, you've been consistent with doing that. And you say, okay, let me get on the scale because all I'm looking for is what? One pound. You stand on that scale, believe it or not, you don't lost maybe three, four, five pounds. Why? Because you start with something in your mind that's attainable. See, everything starts in the mind. So a man thinketh, so is he. So everything starts in your mind. So hope deferred makes the heart sick. Because if you keep hoping for something or you keep, you know, uh, trying to design things in such a way that is, is just, you know, beyond comprehension, then you set yourself up for failure. Now, the hope that we have in God for our big ideas we leave it to God. We pray. We seek the face of the Father. He gives us the plan. We work toward it. That, that, that's understandable. But I'm talking about you have along the way, but trying to reach that big goal, you have to create small goals, things that are attainable along the way that keeps your hope alive. Because if not, hope deferred is going to make the heart sick. You keep saying, ooh, I, I, I want to I be a lawyer. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a lawyer. Okay. Start with opening up a law book and just say, I want to just learn about law that deals with maybe um, uh, theft and robbery. Start in small pieces. Small pieces will hand you into something else. Oh, but you say, oh, I want to go to law school, but I don't have the money. Okay, we could do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Maybe you don't have the money, but you can start somewhere. Is there a course at your community college? Is some some of these uh, schools and uh, uh, they have programs within uh, within schools that are there for you to pick up courses and things like that. There's so many things that are online. Start with something that you are able to put your hands on, where it's attainable, and you're able to succeed in that area. You're able to reach that goal. Because if not, if you keep doing things where you're just saying, "Oh wow." I miss out on this because I don't have any more hope because I tried to make a mansion. I tried to build a house. You've never had any type of course on carpentry. You've never went anywhere to learn about engineering. You got to start with the small steps. Those small steps lead to greater steps and it gets the whole thing done eventually. But you have to make those attainable goals along the way. If not, you always going to walk around. Remember Eeyore? Um, I like Winnie the Pooh. I love Winnie the Pooh. And he had a, 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 a friend that was a mule. And his name was Eeyore. And Eeyore, all everything was, who is me? He walked around, who is me? I'm so sad. Everything was just so sad to poor Eeyore. Everything. Nothing could really make him happy. He didn't have any hope. He didn't have any drive. Hope gives us drive to make it through the next day. To make it through the next month. To look towards the next year. It's the hope that we keep alive on the inside of us. So that our hearts do not become sick. That's why it says, but a longing fulfilled. A longing fulfilled. Fulfilled. Accomplished. Completed. 
filled is a tree of life. You have to do things that are going to be fulfilling to keep your hope alive. Because that is what is the actual tree of life. Some people say, oh, um, I remember our Mother Adams. Mother Adams lived to, lived to be 99.8 years old. Vibrant, full of life. Laughed, traveled. Used to love, I used to love going out with her, eating. Going to the Dutch country. Boat rides, bus rides. I mean, she lived. She dancing on the floor. I remember we had an event and we put the music on and she was dancing on the floor. I mean, just having a good time. And you know why? Because she did things that were fulfilling. She did things that brought her the tree of life. What you want to live, you want to have, you can't walk around without hope. Without hope, once again, you're going to make your heart sick. Without hope, you're not going to have anything to long for to be fulfilled. Once again, you have to create those things. That's the tree of life. That's what's going to make you happy. That's what, what's going to give you that mentality of that Jesus came to give us life and live it abundantly. It's no reason for us to hold our heads down low. I know we get in certain moments where and we choose to re react to events. Uh, sometimes we act to react to those events uh, with hope or hopelessness, but it makes all the difference in how you experience life. If you want to walk around pessimistic, it's okay. But I'm telling you, your experience of life, your quality of life is not going to be one that it's that's deemed to be a quality. Because <laughs> you're always down. You're always down. You got to make sure you keep yourself up. You got to make sure you think on things that are good, things that are righteous, things that are lovely, things that are kind. These things are going to help us have a better experience in life. Sometimes people think that, uh, you know, it could be genetics um, in the way that we relate to things. And it can cause for us, you know, to feel like, you know, my parents had went through maybe depression or you feel like, you know, there's maybe some mental issues that we're dealing uh, with at the time. But you know what? You have to stay in an atmosphere that's charged with positivity and 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 spirituality that's going to once again bring your mind in focus in regard to looking to the Heavenly Father. That is so important. That's why the word says, fret not yourselves amongst the brethren. Because that's, and that's why when you choose a place of worship, you need to get somewhere where the people are loving, where there's a pastor that's willing to work with you, talk with you, speak with you. That is so important. Because once again, this, that, in, that energy, that positive energy, that positive spirituality, that word being taught, it's going to help your mind. It's going to keep your hope. It's going to keep your hope alive so that you can move forward. Let's talk about doubting Thomas. John 20, John 20, John 20, 24 to 31. John 20, 24 to 31. Now in this, we know the story about doubting Thomas. Hold on. Okay. We know about doubting Thomas. He was um, skeptical when they said, you know, that Jesus had came by, came back. Okay, let's read what it says. It says, now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Uh, though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hand? Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now, a lot of times people take that and they say, 
with that story. They say, you know, um, T Thomas was wrong for doubt and he should have just believed right away. And he should, you know, so that's the most the majority of the time when I hear about doubting Thomas, he's always ridiculed for not believing. But see, what needed to be understood is that Thomas didn't, he had his hope. His hope was gone. His teacher, his Lord, was crucified. And he's like, I seen it with my eye. I don't know, but that was that. Seeing your leader, your teacher, your, your friend, your brother being tortured, being ridiculed, being scorned, and you're there seeing it and watching it, piercing the side, that was traumatic. Sometimes trauma can put us in a position where we just have no hope. So what did Jesus do? He didn't ridicule Thomas like I think people sometimes they they feel like he got rebuked. But no, Jesus said, come on. Put your finger in my hand. Put your finger in my hand. And you know why he told him to put his finger? Because Thomas was wounded. He was wounded because he saw his Lord crucified. He his hope was, he said, Come on, Thomas, put put your finger here. See the wound? Jesus felt our wounds and he wanted, he wanted a tangible connection with Thomas to say, I understand you're wounded too. Come on, touch, come on, feel the piercing on my side. Feel it. Touch it. It's me, Thomas. It's me. The one who you believed in, the one who you trusted, the one you learned. It's me. I understand you feel hurt, you feel wounded, but I'm here. I'm here. I did what I said I was going to. I told you I was going to come back. I told you. He understood. He allowed for him to touch those wounds so that they connected, so that Jesus could let Thomas know, I feel that you're wounded too. Let me tell you something. When we have bad days, Jesus feels what we feel. Don't get, don't beat yourself up when you're having a bad day. Oh Lord, I got to tell y'all a story when I see y'all face to face. Y'all gonna laugh at me, but I'm gonna tell y'all a story that happened. But I ain't gonna share it here because I don't want everybody in my business. I'm gonna tell everybody, my church family, something happened to me, and I just kind of like, oh Lord, 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 Lord. It happens. It happens. You, we get disappointed. We feel like, okay, all is lost. See, but with the grace and mercy, Jesus stepped right in on time to repair Thomas's disbelief. He helped him with his battle of being hopeless. And he filled him with light. As he was touching those wounds, he was filling. We, they made a connection, a tangible connection, so that he could understand that I feel what you're feeling, but you're going to be all right. John 20, 26 through 28. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. When he came through the door, shut the door, stood in the midst and said, peace be to you. When he was talking and saying, peace be to you. When he was expressing for that, that is what Jesus wants to give each and every one of us. That peace that surpasses all understanding. See, because if you don't have peace, your hope is going to be uncentered. It's, it, it, your, your hope is going to be lost when you don't have peace. Because you keep just keep overwhelming yourself with all of the thoughts of the world. You keep overwhelming yourself with a busy schedule. You keep overwhelming yourself with bills. You keep overwhelming yourself. Oh, my husband, my kids, my wife. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to get a new job. I got to I got to do I don't, I don't, all this stuff. You get overwhelmed. It's too much. You don't have no peace. And before you know it, you don't have no hope. You don't have no hope. It's okay to hurt. It's okay if you're wounded. You don't have to feel ashamed about those things. Wounds don't have to be hidden in shame. Don't be, don't be ashamed to say, I'm overwhelmed. Sometimes we got to say that. Sometimes we got to say, I'm doing too much. I need to take a break. It's okay. One of the ways that we get our wounds healed, or, or, or healed rather, is when we share them with who? Our Savior. Jesus, I need you. Lord, I need you. Help me. He's a present help in the time of trouble. And he'll be right there to help you. Right there. Jesus looked at Thomas. 
And he didn't beat him down with words. But he felt his heart. He connected with him. It's okay to believe. It's okay to trust Thomas. It's okay. Touch. Come on. It's okay. It's all right now. I say to you, it's okay to believe. It's okay to trust. It's okay to expect it. It's okay to hope. Because you know why? God is faithful. God is faithful. You can put your hope in him and know that everything is going to work things out, time, gradual things. But in the end, everything is going to be all right. Don't lose your hope. Don't. God told you to write that book. It's okay. Things happen. Things going on. <laughs> you, things going to happen. Life happens. And sometimes we get these unexpected interruptions in our lives. But don't let that make you feel that all hope is lost. Put your hope in him. Connect with him. Let Jesus heal your wounds. Let him touch you. When you have disbeliefs, just say, Lord, I need to feel, I need to feel your hands. I need to feel your embrace. I need, come on, I need to know that's you. Let me see that. Let, let, you was wounded, pissed on your side. You know, you was bruised and you, you was beat with many strikes. All of this was for me. Lord, I need to feel that. I need to feel that. Keep your hope. Keep your trust in him. Because it's all going to work out in due time, in due season. It's all going to work out. I, the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came to give us life. And you have to remember that. I, you, you, you just have to, you just really have to hone in on that. Because if you don't, your joy will be snatched. Your peace will be snatched. Your zeal for life will be snatched. I know there's a lot of things that are going on in this world, but I still say to myself, what a wonderful world. God gave us this planet to live on. There are still things to explore. There are still places to go, people to meet. There are still things that are in this earth that are worth living for. Live. Live. And again, I say live. Enjoy your days to come. When you feel yourself a little down, try to, try to look to the hills from which come with your help, knowing that your help is coming from the Lord. Pray, Lord, you be the lift of my head. Read your word fast and pray without ceasing. I encourage you to defeat pessimism. Don't give it room. And when you see it creeping in, do what you need to do to make it go. The best is yet to come. And you know what? God has great things with your name on it. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in on tonight. I pray that the blessing of the Lord will continue to make you rich, adding no sorrow to it. Until we meet or speak again, continue to walk with the King. Love you. Good night.